We have seen a lot of your comments about hydrogen with some being all for it, and others thinking it's a disaster. Not too dissimilar from the Marmite debate. In this video, we'll be looking at an amazing discovery from Rice University that may impact the hydrogen debate. Stick around as you might have your opinion changed by the end of this video. Hydrogen is a clean and highly efficient fuel that can power everything and the best part is that you don't need a lot of it. Let's say you have a gasoline-powered car and a hydrogen-powered car. When you give them the same amount of input, their results are very different. The gasoline car will always run out of juice way before the hydrogen car does, and not to mention the hydrogen car will also give you a lot more power. It's not just cars that can be powered by hydrogen either. You can use hydrogen in houses and many industrial processes as well. What's even better is that there are no harmful emissions that the gas gives out either, and the only kind of emission it does give out is pure water, which is very unlike the traditional power sources. This advantage of using hydrogen power aligns with the global efforts to combat climate change and reduce carbon footprints. Sounds good, right? Well, hold on, because shifting to hydrogen power isn't as easy as it seems. Turns out most of the hydrogen we use today isn't so eco-friendly after all. 95% of the hydrogen that we use today comes from using fossil fuel sources like natural gas and coal in which these hydrocarbon atoms go through reactions to make the hydrogen gas. And while the gas itself is clean and is no threat because it doesn't let out any carbon dioxide, the process of extracting these fossil fuels does. On the other hand, we have green hydrogen. This is the gas that is generated through the process of electrolysis, which is the process of turning water into electricity. You just have to pass an electric current through water, causing it to split into its basic elements, hydrogen and oxygen. And you can use other renewable sources to generate the initial electricity you'll need from sources like solar and wind. All of this sounds like a great deal since all you get from this method is oxygen and hydrogen, but there still is a catch. The biggest challenge is the funding to make it all happen. You see, this method is expensive, so only 5% of the overall hydrogen market uses this method. That's where Rice University comes in with their major breakthrough. The people at Rice University developed a special cell they call the photoelectrochemical cell, and they say this cell will change how energy is stored for good. The purpose of this cell is to convert sunlight to hydrogen. Get ready for a bit of science. This device has advanced halide perovskite semiconductors with high-performance electrocatalysts, which are known for their ability to efficiently absorb sunlight and produce electrons whenever exposed to it. These charged particles then go on to react with water and split the atoms to make oxygen and hydrogen with 20.8% efficiency, which is a lot higher than the last record, which was only 13.4%. This is huge for the university, because if we go back there were a few challenges engineers used to face, especially with efficiency and cost. Scientists at Rice came up with a new design using extremely high-level designs after studying the properties of halide perovskite semiconductors. One point to note here is while halide perovskite is an excellent choice to use when it comes to absorbing sunlight for solar conversion, it does corrode when in contact with water which makes it of no use when needed to split water. To address this issue, the researchers needed to come up with something to make this work while protecting the halide perovskite so that it wouldn't degrade and keep the overall system somewhat stable. Rice was able to solve this problem and the long-awaited breakthrough finally came. When designing the photoelectrochemical cell, they came up with an anti-corrosion barrier that was strategically placed around the semiconductor like a safe layer that doesn't let the conductor degrade from coming in contact with water. This has two layers. One would stop the water from damaging the conductor, while the other would make sure there was a good electrical connection between the perovskite and the electrical coating. Doing this, they were able to save the conductor while still keeping efficiency by transferring the needed electrons for the reactions. The key was to make sure there was a balance between the electricity produced and safeguarding the conductor. The scientist and Rice wanted to make sure this technology is as cost-effective as possible so that it can be used in different commercial applications for a cheaper price. Through many runs and experimenting with different elements, they finally came up with their design. Their ultimate goal is to make sure the energy is taken in from the sun and turned into electricity. 
What sets them apart from other competitors is that this device is extremely cost-effective and efficient. While other semiconductors used are super expensive, Rice used economical semiconductors, which makes this type of device more accessible and affordable for hydrogen production to be used at a much larger scale. And as mentioned before, they even took care of the problem of this semiconductor's highly reactive property. The application of this technology knows no bounds. You can now use it to power up your cars, houses, and even huge factories. The best part is it won't harm the environment like other fuel sources do by leaving out carbon footprints and other dangerous gases. While we do already have other ways of producing clean and green energy, those energy sources aren't in any way close to hydrogen. What we want to say here is that they might be able to produce enough electricity to power up your homes, but hydrogen can do a lot more for less. Look at it this way, your car will travel more, and you can even store the electricity and use it for longer in batteries that can keep giving you power for your house. Hydrogen wasn't a popular fuel source before because of one thing, and that was the cost. It used to be super expensive, but now thanks to Rice using a cost-effective semiconductor, we might just see more hydrogen power in the years to come. Hydrogen is a great power source, but it is also highly reactive, which means it can blow up or cause fire. This flammable nature makes it a huge safety concern. Hydrogen's propensity to catch fire easily and burn intensely makes it extremely risky when handling, storing, and using the gas. There was even an incident where a hydrogen-fueled cell just flat out caught fire during the refueling process in California and that incident is an eye-opener to how dangerous this gas can be. Scientists and engineers are working on this issue and are trying to make storing and using hydrogen as safe as possible. These developments are not only a must for the safety of the public, but also to make it acceptable to be used as a clean energy source at a higher level. Companies are trying to invest in this hydrogen technology, and what they're really trying to work on is decentralizing the gas. By decentralizing what we mean is instead of shipping the gas from other places as we do with oil, machinery and infrastructure, we have the ability to make the gas wherever and whenever. Along with that, they're also working on making this a lot safer and more efficient meaning whenever there's a supply issue. Thanks to the work done by Rice, manufacturers can still keep on making the gas on their site and companies would be able to handle any kind of hiccups which will in return cost less because now these companies won't have to pay for transport. What do you think about hydrogen energy? Is this the key to clean energy in the future? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to subscribe to our channel. See you again soon.